is stored in a reservoir in the hydraulics bay. A mechanical contents gauge is on top of the reservoir. The reservoir supplies the hydraulic shutoff valve just in front of the wing. The valve is electric motor driven. Controlled by the hydraulic cutoff switch beside the landing gear selector. And the fuel hydraulic cutoff switch on the top right hand corner of the dash panel. After use, when both these switches are returned to their normal position, the valve will reopen during the next start sequence. The valve is normally open and supplies the engine driven hydraulic pump. The pump controls the hydraulic pressure at 3150 psi or 217 bar. If the pressure is too low or too high or the hydraulic temperature is too high, Hyde will illuminate on the central warning panel. Pressure fluid is supplied via the high pressure filter to the landing gear and air brake systems. Fluid returns from these systems via the low pressure filter to the reservoir. Both filters have bypasses and indicator pins. Pressure can also be supplied via the ground rig connections. by the hand pump. The air brake is controlled by a switch on the side of the throttle, aft out, forward in. The air brake surface under the fuselage is either fully out or fully in. An uplock hook on the surface with an extension for a proximity sensor engages with the uplock piston in the fuse lash. The proximity sensor signals the air brake indicator on the dash panel. The air brake standby up handle may be used if the air brake valve or electrical circuit fail with the air brake in the out position.
The main jacks are fitted under the wing, outboard of the main gear. The nose jack is fitted under the fuselage, just aft of the exhaust stubs. For raising the aircraft, an operator should be placed at each jack location and the aircraft lifted evenly. Come on fellas, faster. The hydraulic rig is connected through its own service panel in the hydraulics bay. Check the couplings are clean. The hoses should be attached with a single firm push. The rig operator should be trained in the operation of that rig. Before doing a gear swing, the gear safety pins must be removed, the two main leg pins, the nose leg pin, and the nose wheel steering quick disconnect. Check the nose wheel quick disconnect plunger is reconnected. Also check that the gear bays are clear for retraction. All four gear pins must be removed. The gear can then be retracted and extended using the undercarriage selector in the cockpit. The air brake can also be moved using the air brake switch on the throttle. If no hydraulic rig is available, the service valve and switch can be used to move the gear doors and air brake. The service valve and switch are located at the aft face of the baggage bay.
the service valve uses fluid pressure from the emergency gear accumulator. To open the doors, the service switch should be selected to doors open. and the service valve rotated and held until the doors are fully open. To close the doors, the service switch should be returned to its normal position and the service valve turned and held until the doors are fully shut. With the service switch at its normal position, the service valve can be used to move the air brake by using the air brake switch in the cockpit. The accumulator must be fully charged. With the aircraft parked, with no electric or hydraulic power, moving the service valve will close the doors and air brake if they are open. First, we must return the fluid from the emergency accumulator back to the reservoir. This is done by turning the dump valve until the gas pressure gauge stops falling. Next we check the contents on the reservoir contents gauge. This should normally be 275 cubic inches with the accumulator fluid returned back to the reservoir. The reservoir service panel is inside the baggage bay on the forward face. On the left side it has the fill connection and the dump valve. On the right side the pressure gauge and the nitrogen service connection. If we wish to change the fluid we will first dump the fluid. If we are just topping up we will connect up a hand pump to the fill connection. In either case, we pump in fluid until the contents gauge reads 
275 cubic inches. Once we have reached the required level, we will then check there is no air in the reservoir by using the dump or bleed valve. This expels fluid from the top of the reservoir through an outlet under the fuselage. Sufficient volume should be removed to check that the air in the lines has passed out the outlet pipe. After bleeding, we must top up again using the hand pump. When the correct level is again reached, the hand pump may be disconnected. Next, we must check the nitrogen pressure in the reservoir. Connect the nitrogen rig to the nitrogen connection Schrader valve. Check the connections are tightened securely. Refer to the maintenance manual for the pressure temperature table. In this example, 5.5 bars at 10 degrees C. and that completes servicing of the reservoir. Next, we must check the nitrogen pressure in the accumulator. Connect the nitrogen rig to the Schrader valve. Refer to the maintenance manual for pressure and temperature.
In this example, 115 bar at 10 degrees C. Disconnect the nitrogen pipe and replace the cap. And that completes the normal hydraulic servicing sequence. A hand pump is provided for charging the accumulator, operating the undercarriage doors, the gear legs and the air brake. For accumulator charging, pull circuit breakers number 32 and 41. The hand pump handle is stowed in the baggage bay above the door. and is attached to the hand pump using a pip pin. The hand pump requires a strong operator. On completion, remove the handle and stow. Remember to close and secure all panels and doors. This program is designed as an introduction to servicing. For full servicing, refer to the maintenance manual.